Well, happy Resurrection Day, everybody. Uh, it's excited to be here. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. That's right. Well, listen, Good Good Friday, uh, we began talking about how Easter this year and it's, it's how Easter this year <laughs> and um, Passover. Passover coincide. So we begin Friday night talking about the center point of both the Old Testament Passover and the New Testament uh, crucifixion is the Lamb. And we said that he was the Lamb of God. Today I'd like to continue the comparing and contrasting Passover and the resurrection. So if, Sharon, if you'll begin by reading the resurrection text for us Absolutely. out of the book of John. Starting in John chapter 20, verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. So she ran and came to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter and the other disciple went forth and they were going to the tomb. The two were running together and the other disciple ran ahead faster. Then Peter came to the tomb first. And stopping and looking in, he saw the linen, linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And so Simon P Peter also came following him and entered the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there. And the face cloth, which had been on his head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. So the other disciple who had first come to the tomb then also entered, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. So the disciples went away again to their own homes, but Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. And so as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus mm -hmm. had been lying. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father and my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came announcing the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. I, before you continue, I just think it's so interesting that she didn't recognize Jesus until he called her name. No. And I think, you know, for us, there's that, that special moment when Jesus calls our mm. name. First, when we get saved, and he, he calls our name, and we recognize that it's the Lord that we want to run to. Yeah. But then I think throughout our Christian walk, there are times when he calls our name. Mm -hmm. And so today, I, I would just like to... You know, just give a challenge to all of you. Just listen. Listen for when the Lord calls his name. That's good. And then it's your cue that you will know it's him. You'll you'll know it's yeah. him and you'll be able to respond just like like Mary did, maybe not calling him Ramoni, mm. Rabboni, but calling him Lord. That's good. You know, I never get tired of this text. Me neither. I, I you know, it's the text that makes me cry because this this is really the center the centerpiece of our faith. Right, the Apostle Paul talks about this, this being the centerpiece of our faith. If the resurrection weren't true, then, then Christianity has no value. But in fact, the resurrection is true. So at the center of the Old Testament Passover story and the center of the New Testament resurrection story is a man. The Old Testament man is Moses. The New Testament man is Jesus. So I'd like just to take a few minutes today and compare and contrast those two. So I'll begin by saying this, that... Um, they both had a house. Hebrews chapter three, verse five says it this way. Now Moses was faithful in his house as a servant, for he was a testimony of those things which are to be spoken later. But Christ was faithful to his house 
of which we are as a son. So in the Old Testament, the servant, he was a servant. In the New Testament, Jesus is the son of over a house. And that house is the church. That house is you and I. Jesus is the cornerstone. He's the bridegroom. We are the bride. I want you to know the beautiful contrast here is Moses was only over a servant over a house. Jesus is savior and son over our house. Uh, the second contrast I'd like to talk about today is one is a law giver and one is a law keeper. So Moses goes to Mount Sinai. We'll talk in a few minutes about the, the presence of angels there, but Moses goes to Mount Sinai 40 days, 40 nights, the thunder, the lightning, the glory of God, the splendor of God was all around, and he gets the law. He's the law uh, giver, right? He's the, the one who receives the law. He's the law giver, but it's Jesus that's the law keeper. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 and 15 says it this way. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let, it, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are yet without sin. I love that, how it says yet without sin. Can you imagine Jesus being tempted in everything you and I are tempted with? right? And every base sin that you and I have to face every day, he was tempted just like that. The difference is what? He overcame. Right. Yeah. He overcame and he didn't sin. That's right. He didn't sin. So that's the, the contrast there. I want you to see is that lawgiver, lawkeeper. So um, next I want to talk to you about the prophet. So the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, Moses says this, the day will come where God will raise up a prophet like me over you, only he'll be greater and more, and he'll be greater. And then the book of Acts says it this way, Acts chapter three, let me find the book of Acts here. Somebody hit it in my Bible. <laughs> Acts chapter three, verse 19. Uh, Peter is, is preaching, he says this, therefore repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. I love that, that after repentance comes times of refreshing from the Lord. And that he may send Jesus, the appointed one to you, whom heaven must receive until the period of the restoration of all things, about which God spoke by the mouth of the holy prophets from ancient time. Moses said, the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me, from among the brethren. To him you shall give heed to everything he says to you. And Peter goes on to talk about Jesus being that prophet. Moses was a prophet of sorts, but Jesus comes to be both king, prophet, and priest. Don't you love that? He fulfills all three of those, those uh, positions, prophet, king, and priest. And today on this beautiful Resurrection Sunday, I want you to know that Jesus presides in your life, in my life, as both prophet, priest, and king. And this next contrast and comparison really is interesting. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses five and six, says something really mysterious thing. It says that Moses died at Mount Horeb and God buried him, and no one knows where it is to this day, where God buried Moses. Do you remember being in Israel and, and Mount Horeb? Remember that? I do. Yeah. I so do. remember the, where the tomb of Moses was? <clears throat> there were about 10 of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. There were about 10 different places where the tourists would come. Oh, Moses is buried here. Oh, Moses is buried there. The truth is that nobody knows where Moses is buried. Why? Because God buried him. <laughs> and then, interestingly enough, the book of Jude talks about that, that Michael, the archangel, and, the, and, and Satan wrestled over the body of Moses. So I'm not sure what that's all about, what the enemy would have done with the body of Moses, but I know this for sure. God hid him and buried him. Now, here's the interesting thing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10 says that God raised Jesus from the dead. God buried Moses, <coughs> but God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Isn't that a beautiful thing? It is, and it just displays God's awesome power to, to do things for our benefit that we have no idea at the moment. Like, why did he hide Moses' body? What benefit was there to us of him hiding Moses? We obviously know the benefit of him raising Jesus. Yeah. But God was intentional about both those things for very specific purposes. 
I think that every day in our lives, God, God's doing things that we find the purpose of it maybe years down the road. Right. Right. I can think of things, even growing up, how we both grew up, right, in different ways. Right. But God had prepared the purpose of our lives was already being prepared way back there. Right. And yeah. probably some things we won't <clears throat> even know till heaven. I would agree. Some things you won't know till heaven. Yeah. Right. So uh, the next comparison is angels. This is an interesting thing. The Bible says that there were angels, um, or the law of the Old Testament was ordained by angels. Galatians chapter three says that. Stephen reinforces that uh, before he dies when he preaches to the Jews in Acts chapter seven. So there were angels involved in the process of the giving of the law. I, I would have loved to have been at the top of the mountain, right, with the glory of God all around, and Moses there, and the angels all around, ordaining the scriptures, ordaining the Old Testament law. But let's take a look at John chapter 20, verse 12. About angels in the New Testament. <clears throat> uh, while she was standing there, the text that you read was Mary. While she was standing there, two angels in white, sitting one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus was lying. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? So in the contrast and comparison with Moses being over his house, and Jesus being over his house, which is us, the angels were involved in both of those situations. Do you ever think about how often angels are around us and we're not even aware of it? I do. I, um, I spoke to someone this week and they were talking about a time when they were really distressed and a loved one was dying and a nurse came to talk to them, to comfort them because she was trying to get information and couldn't get any. And the nurse came and talked to her and told her what was going on. And later, as her loved one was passing, that same nurse was there. And when she went back to thank them, there was no nurse mm. that fit that description in the hospital. They said no one was working that night. No, there's, there's no one with that name, no one with that description. And she's convinced that it was an angel who gave her the information she needed and was there to comfort her when she needed comfort. And I, I believe that totally. I, and that's actually how I've prayed, that even as in this season when people are in the hospital and no mm -hmm. one's allowed to visit them, mm -hmm. that God would send angels as, um, as housekeepers, as nurses, as technicians, that they would be dressed that way, mm -hmm. but they'd actually be <laughs> angelic beings to minister to the saints who are in, or even minister to, to people who are not saved yeah, that's and right. to, to draw them to Jesus. We're living in an unprecedented time right now, right? With this whole thing right. going on around us. In our lifetime, this has just been an incredible event. And what a great opportunity. Uh, and I want you to pray this way, guys. Pray for Christ to be real to people. In the middle of all this fear that's going on around us, fear will drive people to do funny things. Fear will actually drive people to find Christ. So I really want you to, right. to do that during this season, right? And the word says that if we lift Jesus up, he'll draw all men unto him. So in our own lives, as we navigate this, from our homes, the people we talk to, the people we interact with, if we're working from home, we need to lift Christ up so that he can draw all men unto him. I, I was doing something the other day and I, I wanted to say something about Christ and I hesitated because I thought, well, this isn't really a situation where I would openly talk about Christ. And then I remembered a reminder that I put in my phone back in mm -hmm. January, do not seek the approval of men. And so I thought, what if I got to lose? What, what's gonna happen if I lift right. up Christ in this situation? So I did, and the woman responded with, amen, thank you so <laughs> much. I really <laughs> needed to hear that. I've really been struggling. And if I hadn't been bold enough mm -hmm. to, you know, to lift up Christ, so I just think we have to lift him up and let him do the work. You know, it's right. not about yeah. us. It's about us glorifying and lifting him up and letting him do all the heavy lifting. Yep, that's perfect. I was yeah. just gonna say the same phrase. Were you? <laughs> yeah, I was. Heavy lifting? <laughs> heavy lifting. So the next comparison, the next comparison contrast is that, that there was an enemy defeated by both of these guys, right? Moses defeated an enemy and Jesus defeated an enemy. Exodus chapter 14 verse 28 says, the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, even Pharaoh's entire army that had gone into the sea after them. Not even one of them remained. I, when we were growing up, remember watching the Ten Commandments, right? The great movie, The Ten yeah. Commandments. I loved uh, the, the, mag the magnificence of the 
splitting of the Red Sea, and then the water is coming and crushing down and uh, crushing Pharaoh and all of his army. And then years later down the road, I saw how they actually did that in the movie set. I was so disappointed. It just took all, all the fun out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so I still want to remember this event right here, that the enemy was defeated. Pharaoh was defeated. His entire army was gone. Well, in the same way, Jesus defeated the enemy on the cross. I want you to know that. Jesus defeated the enemy of your soul and my soul. So greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Jesus is victorious and Satan is defeated. What's that? Um, I look to my right. Help me with that. Oh, um, when I look to my right, I see Satan has fallen. That's right. Or when I look to my right, I see Jesus has risen. Con or conquered. conquered, conquered. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's good. All right. Finally, I want you to know that Moses led a people out of slavery and the empty tomb releases people from the slavery of sin. So if you're here watching this today and you're struggling with sin issues, today's the day to ask the Holy Spirit to help you overcome those things. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't yet know Jesus, you know that a lot of people don't know Christ. They go to church, they do church things, but they don't really know Him. Right, because there's a big difference between knowing about Him yeah. and actually knowing Him. Mm -hmm. In, well, yeah, I, I just read part of my devotion <clears throat> today was talking about how we get healed, not how we think, but we get healed by touching Jesus. And we have to know him to touch him. We can't just know about him. No. We, we have mm -hmm. to, to know him. We have to enter into a relationship with him. And it's, it's not hard, mm -hmm. but it's a little undaunting maybe for some to enter into a relationship with somebody they can't see. But Let me you know. tell you how easy that is. I always say getting saved is easy. People make it difficult. Getting saved is, watch, watch how I do it. Jesus, I need you. I'm desperate for you. I, I, I'm a sinner, I just need to be forgiven of my sins. I wanna live with you and I wanna change governments. I wanna give up the government of myself and, and accept the government of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Just that simple, see, yeah, so. Done. Yeah, so Father, I do thank you for today and for your Bible. No, just scriptures are so important to us. As we contrasted the man Moses, who was a servant over his house, and the man Jesus, fully man, fully God, being son over his house, of which we are. And I thank you that we get a chance today not to walk in the law, the Old Testament law, but to walk in the freedom of your grace and your mercy and your incredible love. Thank you, Lord, for today. Ask that you bless this, this Easter day from the beginning to the end. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, you brought up something earlier today about stories. Why don't you talk to us about that? Well, um, first, before I do that, could I just mm. say that if you've accepted Christ this morning as for the first time, or maybe if you've decided to just renew your commitment to living for Christ, you can contact us through the website. Uh, you can contact us. I think Pastor Art has given his phone number so many times. <laughs> over the last month, if you haven't written it down, you can probably find it someplace. Just give us a call. Give us a call, send us a text, send us a message, and we'll be praying for you. And when this is all over, maybe we can connect personally. If you're in the area, if you're not in the area, we can connect through uh, social media or through some other form. But whatever you do, connect with someone so that you can begin to fellowship and grow in the grace that Christ gives all of us. That's good, yeah. And then back to stories. Uh, as you know, we've talked about uh, at the beginning of the year when this first started to roll out that Christ has prepared us. Those of you who have been a part of the Chestnut Street Community Church family and community of faith for the last five years, he's prepared us. He called us to be heroes. He called us to go higher. He called us to be on purpose. He called us to rest. He called us to engage not only the enemy, but uh, the Holy Spirit and our community. And then he called us this year to advance. And so you are prepared. God has taken great pains, great purpose to prepare us for the season that we're in. So we wanna hear your stories. We wanna hear what's going on in your life, even though we can't be together. As those of you who fellowship in this particular location know we have a thankful journal in the back and we can write things in there that we're thankful for. 
We also have a CSCC wins notebook where when God does something amazing, we put it in the CSCC wins notebook. And so we want to hear your, your stories. We'll write them in the books. Uh, we'll print out your text messages and stick them in the pages or however you communicate with us. But I want you to understand that there's nothing that you're doing that is too small. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that you're doing that is insignificant. It might be a phone call, a conversation with a coworker. It might be a prayer that you prayed for someone. It might be a response yeah, um, right. from a neighbor. It might be something that you've just reached out like, hey, the Lord told me to call this person and they were encouraged. We wanna hear all those stories because it's the stories of how God moves that is encourage us to step out with bold confidence mm -hmm. knowing it's him that's calling us to do it. So please, please, please send us your stories. We want to hear everything. Yeah, that's right. Well, listen, we're going to wrap it up for now, but I want to remind you that if you go to the website, you can be invited to the, um, you can be invited to all these things. You can, the adult Sunday school class at nine o'clock on Sunday morning. You can be invited by Zoom for our prayer meeting on Tuesday nights. You can come watch me teach on the Bible, uh, Facebook Live, eight o'clock on Thursdays. Go to the website. The website is cscc-family.org and mom shout out. And <laughs> thank you. The shout out is to Avenue Florists on Elmore Avenue in Elizabeth. Our wonderful flower arrangement is compliments of them. And I don't know if you were with us either Good Friday or uh, Palm Sunday, but there were no emerald palms to be had this year. I tried to buy them. I tried to use them as some decor here, but their suppliers couldn't get them through. So uh, the gentleman there who owns that shop, he and I spoke and we decided that Baker's Fern was as close to emerald palms or uh, bulb palms that we were gonna get this year. So he sent over a big bunch of emerald palm, um, of Baker's Fern and some baby's breath and we used that to decorate uh, for Good Friday. We used that to decorate our little table here for uh, Palm Sunday. And then he sent over this flower arrangement for us for this morning. Mm -hmm. So please um, pray for that gentleman yes. and give him a shout out when we're all out and about and we can mm -hmm. order flowers again. He's a, he's a great guy and uh, very, very kind to help us out. What's the name season. of the forest again? Avenue Florists on Elmora in Elizabeth. You got it. All right. God bless you guys. We love you. Have a great week. Take care.